Hi, Ian Dainty here, CEO of Maximize Business Marketing. And today I want to talk to you about why marketing is so important versus sales in today's B2B business world. Here's a quote I like by David Packard. So you can see co-founder of with Bill Hewitt of Hewlett Packard. Most of you know it as just HP today. Marketing is too important to be left to the marketing department. What he meant was marketing should be ingrained throughout the whole organization and not just have marketing do, do it. Um, ha, be marketing and I'll get into that a little later in the presentation. Here's another one I like. Our study concludes that this is the percentage of our customers who will buy from us without any effort whatsoever on our part. Zero percent. So what it says is you got to be marketing all the time and selling. But you'll find out today that selling is actually part of marketing as I uh, explain it. So what is marketing? Well, everything is marketing. And what do I mean by that? Well, marketing encompasses almost everything you do in your business. It's Marcom, which is marketing communications. That is sending out stuff, communicating with your clients and prospects. It's your website, as you know. It's the content you send out, not just the content on your website, but your brochures, your logos, how you present yourself, uh, any, um, anything else you present to the public, and also internally. It's email, all right? That's marketing and very important part. Client service, so the customers that call in with a with a question or a complaint, that's part of marketing and client service should be turning that over into sales and marketing. It's social, all the social things that uh, and platforms that you use, emails and or we talked about that, um, LinkedIn, Twitter, possibly uh, Facebook, all of these social platforms that you use. Sales, of course, is part of marketing. And I'll explain that in another video, but it's all part of marketing. And of course, the people in your organization should be all part of marketing and how they present themselves and therefore your company to the public and to your clients and prospects. There's a myth I want you to forget. And that is, I think this was put out by Forrester, buyers are 67% through the buying process before engaging with salespeople. First of all, I don't know how they ever got the number 67 as opposed to 80 or 90. I mean, I guess they interviewed 100 people and 67 of them said this, but it's the only way I could see them getting it. There was some um, multiple and ratio of that. But it's crazy. It's crazy. Now, if you don't sell to people, if you're not proactive, then maybe this is true, but that's what I want to talk about to you today. So how do you get in the B2B door uh, without waiting for the people to call you? Well, again, I want you to forget this particular myth that buyers are 67% through their buying profess. That may be true. It may be true if you just sit around and wait, but I don't want you to wait. I want you to forget that the B2B salespeople are becoming extinct. They are in some areas where, uh, um, you know, if you're a total commodity, like a if you sell uh, wrenches or screws and nuts or something, that's probably true. But if you sell a value-added product and it's in service, it's not true. And especially, especially want you to forget you shouldn't contact the prospect or your, or your clients first, okay? This is what I want to talk to you about today. So you're going to run up against a bunch of issues when you do contact clients. One of them are gatekeepers, okay? Procurement has become a big one more and more and more. And there are other gatekeepers you're gonna run up against. I have another uh, video that I'll talk to you about that. Your status quo is always your biggest competitor. <coughs> Excuse me. You have other competition too, and a lot of this competition is not even direct competition because of the way the internet is, can come at them from every angle. So you've gotta be aware of that. You must have a differentiation. You must show, and I've just put out a, another article on differentiation that you should read, because even big companies like IBM and Hewlett Packard and others don't differentiate themselves enough. They just go on their name, I guess. But as a smaller company, you need to differentiate or a medium-sized company. Price is always going to be a factor, especially with procurement getting involved now. And I talk and can talk to you about that, about how you can get around price. Obviously, you've got to be competitive to a certain extent, but how you can get around it. And value, of course, and benefits and price are all rolled into the value equation. I like to call value as the total um, 
benefits that you have. So if you add up all your benefits, that's the value you bring. And of course, there are other factors too, but these are the main ones that you're go going to run up against. And you've got to understand how to um, go around these, how to handle them and how to turn them around in your favor. And I have many videos and articles that I explain that. So let's look at what the buyer's journey is, okay? Now we used to do the sales journey, which is find leads, go talk to them, convert them into sales. You know, the old ABC always be closing, which is never, never true nowadays. So what is the buyer's journey? Now you're gonna see a lot of people explain this in a different way and it's not necessarily linear it can go back and forth but let's just look at what they do first of all they may be unaware unconcerned about any uh, issue that they've got and um, you know they probably have issues but they're not concerned about them or they may be unaware of them then they do be c become concerned and aware of them and they want to learn more so once they've learned more, they say, hey, we better change this. So they do. They make a case for change. This is what your clients do. And then they investigate options. What are the different options? Now, they, maybe they, uh, Forrester thinks this is 67% true. But anyway, they don't even contact you if you're doing this. And this is why uh, I'll get into in a sec why you need to be proactive. Then they'll choose an option, which hopefully it's you. And then they're going to implement it. Okay, so all of these things have to happen. But you'll notice between unaware or unconcerned in the white uh, box and then concerned, I don't have an arrow because there's a trigger event that happens in here. Now, what is the trigger event? Well, the trigger event could be them understanding that, hey, we got a problem here. We need to fix it. So that's when they be concerned and want to lose, learn more. If you wait till that time, the chances of you getting the business are, as we always like to say, slim and none, unless you're a huge corporation. Even then, they could be slim and none. So what is a trigger event? Well, if you, it says, hey, we, we got to, it could be them saying, hey, we got to find something out. And if you've been getting in touch with them through all the different aspects of Marcom, as I talked about before, especially email, and you're keeping in touch with them and, and through social, then you would become the trigger event when they say, ha ha, we got to do something. Let's talk to Danny's company as an example, because our sales are failing and we need to pick them up. So you need to be that trigger event by using all your marketing elements to help them and to make sure that they see you first. Okay. And then you can help them make the case for change. You can help them investigate options. You can help them choose the option, which is you, and then you can implement it, okay? So you be the trigger event by getting in touch with them, finding out who your, who your um, client market is, who your best clients would be, get in touch with them through the marketing elements that I talked about, and you be the trigger event, okay? If you have questions, please contact me at ian at maximizebusinessmarketing.com. And more importantly, if you'd like to learn more and like to understand how I can help you grow your revenues 25% to 100% every year, and I've had clients that have done all of those things, and in fact, in every, in sometimes in two to three years, they've grown three to five times their revenue, please contact me at ian at maximizebusinessmarketing.com. In the meantime, please um, put this out on social media by liking it and, and LinkedIn or Facebook and, or uh, Twitter so that other people can see it too. Thanks a lot. Um, and until uh, we talk again or until the next video, see you soon.